Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome everyone, starting a new segment here today. Maybe it'll become a, a regular segment. We'll, we'll uh, see how it goes. But uh, I've done a number of videos about some of my card dealing adventures, you know, some of my largest purchases, things like that. And I, I wanted to give the viewers a chance to share their stories. I, I, get, I get a lot of emails from viewers you know, just wanting to, uh, you know, share a story about the hobby, you know, an interesting deal they made or a quirky tidbit about their collection. You know, as a, as you may have noticed, I'm a big fan of uh, quirky tidbits. So I've got uh, three stories here to share, plus a bonus item at the end. Again, these were all sent in by viewers who just wanted to share an experience about the hobby. And uh, I thought they were pretty interesting. So uh, if you have a, an experience you'd like to share and for me to consider in a future video, you know, please send me an email. I've included my email and uh, instructions in the description uh, below. First story is from Kenneth Rogers. He's a huge uh, Star Wars fan. He collects a lot of original Star Wars cards from the, the late 70s and the early 80s. Uh, seven months ago or so, he sent in a Star Wars order to PSA. Of course, with the PSA backlogs, he still has not gotten the order back. And uh, sort of got sick of waiting as he, uh, as he has uh, more Star Wars cards he wanted to, to get graded. So he decided to try SGC. SGC is not as popular as PSA when it comes to the, uh, the Star Wars cards, but they have lightning fast turnaround times and, and as of today are, are a whole lot cheaper. So he sends an order into SGC and uh, they come back in a month or whatever it is. Like, like I said, SGC has very impressive uh, turnaround times at the moment. Two of the cards he sent in to SGC were 1984 uh, Kellogg's. It's, it's a really nice looking set. There's only 10 cards in the entire set and they are, they're a bit rarer than other Star Wars uh, sets from the same time period. Uh, you can see he got an 8.5 on both Darth Vader and Chewbacca. He decides to check the pop report on some of the cards and finds a quirky tidbit. As I mentioned, I'm a fan of uh, quirky tidbits. He noticed that these were the only two copies of any cards from this set to ever be graded by SGC. Uh, PSA has graded 134 cards from the set, including each card at least nine times, but SGC has just graded his two cards. That's it, so, sort of random. So uh, they are both legitimately pop ones with none higher. Pretty cool. Uh, in his email to me, he wrote, I am the pop report, which technically is uh, is true. And when he sent these in, he was uh, just a learner, but now he is the master. Uh, he's asked me to ask everyone never to submit any of these cards to SGC uh, so that he can forever maintain his pop report monopoly, but uh, that request is obviously tongue in cheek. Second story is from Adam Hoots, and it's a uh, pack opening story. Adam inherited a card collection from his grandfather who passed away a few years ago, and these had been sitting in storage for, for a number of years, and included a bunch of unopened wax from 2003 basketball. More specifically, uh, there was two unopened boxes of Upper Deck, three unopened boxes of Upper Deck LeBron James Phenomenal Beginnings, uh, over 200 packs of Upper Deck MVP, and about 100 packs of Upper Deck Victory. Now, as you may already know, uh, 2003 is LeBron James' rookie year. This is, this is critical as uh, LeBron rookies are, are big bucks and uh, the rare parallels can be even, even bigger bucks. So he's, he's you, you know, gunning for those. But there's also other rookies to pull, uh, Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, and, and uh, Carmelo Anthony. Uh, so he decides to open just the, uh, the loose packs first. And out of the Upper Deck uh, MVP packs, he pulls 13 LeBron James rookies, certainly some that are grade worthy. PSA 9 sell for around $300 and PSA 10's around uh, 1,000. So I uh, also pulled a bunch of Bosch, Wade, and, and Carmelo's. Uh, Adam decided to open one of the Upper Deck boxes as well. Sort of a bad news, good news thing here. He, he did not hit a single LeBron James, uh, nor a, a Bosch or a Wade or a Carmelo, but uh, he did hit two really nice patch cards, which uh, more than makes up for it. First was a dual patch of Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. Uh, the only recent sale on one of these was a PSA 9 that went for $580. And uh, in the same box pulled another Kobe jersey card. This one, a UD game jersey patch logos with a really nice three color patch. These were inserted one in 5,000 packs. Really nice hit here, a very rare card. And it's so rare that PSA has only graded one copy of it ever. Really not sure what this card uh, would fetch, but but you know I would certainly guess well over a thousand dollars easy. Uh, congrats on that, Adam. A couple a couple of really nice hits there, and and he still has more uh, more packs to open. So hope the hope the good luck continues. Third story is a slightly I guess we'll call it a disturbing one. It's from uh, Eugene Kutorski. Hope I hope I got your name right. Uh, Eugene's a big soccer guy, and he came across this uh, 2017 Bruno Fernandez. Orange Refractor selling raw on eBay. 
Orange Refractors are numbered out of 25, and uh, Fernandez is a major star for Portugal and, and Manchester United. This is his rookie card, and it's the first year of Topps Chrome Soccer. Uh, the card looked uh, absolutely mint in the photos. So he buys the card raw on eBay for $1,050. When he receives it, he looks it over closely, and he even uses a, a magnifying glass to, to look up close, and the card is absolutely perfect, and, and he starts to get excited. He, he decides to send it to, to PSA. At the time, there had been no copies of this card graded by PSA, so in a PSA 10 or a PSA, even a PSA 9, you know, it's a, it's a pop one. We're, we're talking about a, a big money card here. So he sends it to PSA using uh, their Super Express service, basically spends a little over $300 uh, all in, and he gets the, uh, the card back very quick, a Super Express uh, turnaround time is usually about two weeks. But the card received a grade of a five. Th th this can't be right, the, the card was perfect. Uh, he's worried that maybe it was damaged somehow in shipping or perhaps the, the grader damaged it somehow, so he looks over the card really closely, but but he just sees no damage. You know, very 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 confusing. He notices on the pop report that there are now two copies graded by PSA. Uh, there's a mint nine and his EX five. He, he contacts PSA to see if maybe they switched the cards by accident somehow, but uh, that really goes nowhere with uh, with customer service. And PSA has a policy. You know, we don't provide info on why a card received its grade. Eugene gets some second opinions. He shows the card to a, a, a number of other people, and basically everyone says the exact same thing. There's, they don't see any reason this card should get anything less than a nine, you know, maybe an eight at the absolute worst. But, you know, fed up with PSA, Eugene cracks it out of the case and uh, he sends the card into HGA. A month later, the card comes back from HGA, graded a pristine ten. Subgrades are all tens except for a nine point five for surface. Uh, basically, just short of being a perfect card. So. In the end, he got the grade he deserved just in, in a different holder and, you know, it obviously ended up costing him a whole lot more than, than it should have. I had a very similar experience with a Sandy Koufax rookie, which I've, you know, shared on the channel. So I, I guess this sort of thing just happens every now and then with uh, PSA, you know, r really no idea why. Maybe, maybe it was an honest mistake. Maybe, uh, maybe it's a pop report manipulation thing. Maybe the grader was just having a really bad day that day. Who, who knows? But uh, regardless, I would say that's something, you know, PSA needs to, needs to get a handle on. So those are the three stories, and I actually have one more bonus item for you. Uh, a viewer, Michael Golden, who is a, he's also a songwriter, he was watching uh, one of my videos, and uh, I mentioned Tinkers to Evers to Chance, the famous Chicago Cubs infield from, from over 100 years ago now. All three of those guys are in the Hall of Fame. Joe Tinker, a shortstop, uh, Johnny Evers, a second baseman, and, and Frank Chance, a uh, first baseman. But uh, it inspired uh, Michael to write a song called uh, Tinkers to Evers to Chance, which he did, and he, he sent it to me. I mean, very, very cool. So... I'm going to close out today's video by playing a, a verse from the song, and you can you can check out his channel. I included a, a link in the description below. Thanks, guys. The giant's heart can break so easily. Tinkers to Evers to Chance. It's just as easy as six, four, and three. Tinkers to Evers to Chance. An infield play smacking up a Tinkers, they have us to 